So that's kind of interesting because I can't see the screen here, but I can see it there, so I have a little bit of weatherman action happening. But okay, this is the telematics site, and um, the, my partner in this, so I'm not just some sort of guy wandering around, is, uh, well, I am that too, but is uh, Dr. Cameron Jones of the uh, Swinburne University of Technology. He's, been, he's the, really the pioneer in this field. If you see the new light there swirling around, um, that is uh, the, uh, is that the one, the paper that started it all? And what he's done, he's been doing this since uh, really the early 90s. His PhD was a couple years ago. Um, he's the CD spiral or the CD-ROM computing guru. In effect, he's the only person who's been really doing it. Um, there's a project. We, we, we ran around and scouted the other competition, and there's a project at UCSD. And they posted they're going to be doing something in July. I don't know if they looked at our website and said, hey, we've got to do something soon. But it's almost August, so <laughs> the, the, the race is on for... Uh, homebrew molecular biochips, which is what this ultimately is. But what, what, what Dr. Jones has done is um, you can specially mod these disks, and here's another shameless plug. We are going to be selling the disks next year. I'm going to be moving to Australia New Zealand to work on it with him, and we're going to be selling um, basically their treated disks that you can lay uh, bioorganic goo or mass or matter, whatever you want to call it, over and um, have it stick on the chip or have it stick on the disk, treat the disk as part of the mod process. But beyond that, you put it in a CD drive, which we also supply, but you can also hook it into your system so hackers can really uh, use the tools to read uh, or scan a biochip. And the CD-ROM scanners right now can read medical um, bacteria, if you're, you know, human bacteria, if you want to determine what kind of ailment you have. That's the, one of the main applications. This application here, of special interest to people here, is crypto. And curiously, the patterns on a molecule, microbial molecule, are fractalic and similar in nature to an MD5 hash data set. So if you go down here, this is the basic method we're using. You can see it bounces off the ROM. It goes through some processing, and then it reads out on the other end. I'm writing the Linux software for it right now, and we're going to be selling it as a, a black box or a white box, but a lot of the crypto stuff is, is already functional. It's been functional for a while. So this is the uh, hash and message digest function. Hash and message digest function is a one-way procedure. That is, okay. So, so you can read that. And what, what goes on is that function can actually be performed on the data that you lay it over. Can really, it can really be done at all input-output levels with all keys. But what it does is it simulates that kind of crypt key. And those are the, 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 those are the differences when you change the keys. So it'll, in fact, encrypt the data differently. Pretty interesting because of the speed. The speed of the encryption process is, it, it's based on the hardware of laying over a microbial organic mass on a CD. So what's taking place are the light interactions between the optical head and the disk. And that's a lot faster than what takes place in a normal chip. A lot faster. So some people are doing it right now. But you need the treated disks. 
and you need a modded CD-ROM drive that can sterilize your mass, your biomass. But other than that, our software is going to be fairly open-ended, and I'm setting up a P2P site so you can do computation using this technique on a distributed network. So everybody can run these little biochips that are on top of their disks off a distributed network. Now the key for all of this is, in case you don't know, a CD-ROM path or the track on a CD-ROM is an Archimedean spiral. It's several kilometers long, believe it or not. It's 22,000 revolutions approximately. 22,188 just to, and some change, like 0.604 something, just to show you that I've been doing some of that. But um, when you burn a, a disc, it forms a shallow pit on the disc. A professional burner or a commercial burn disc will be a clean cut. Um, if you use your CD-ROM burner, it'll have jagged edges along it. Um, jump back here. Okay, so that's the crypto stuff. And what, what, what happens is the mass is laid over those pits. Um, the scanner is supposed to scan the pits, but instead what it does is it hits the um, organic matter. It hits cellular 3D molecules, 700 nanometers. Now hydrogen molecule is under one nanometer, 0.5 nanometers, depending on the type of hydrogen. Uh, these are real atoms, not virtual atoms. Um, it's not a PNP. It's an actual molecule with protons and neutrons inside it. So it hits that at 700 nanometers, but instead of reading the pit and bouncing off it and giving it a zero or a one, um, it, when it d runs through the checksum, there's a standard series of checksums that all the CD-ROM software uses. It gives a bunch of errors. So we get those errors, and that's what we base our molecular reading scans on. So really what it is is an incredibly cheap microscope that can right now discern bacteria, and it can also crypt data extremely fast. That's the site. I have some shots of the spiral because what, what we're going to do is we're turning all of this beyond the crypto. I'm turning the technology into a learning site for, um, for Australia, really for the world. So you can go and poke around it and see what, you, what all you can do with the CD-ROM spiral. The next major innovation we're working on, if, uh, if you're interested in really pushing the edge is a cellular CCD cluster that sticks on the back end of a disk. Um, I discovered this when I was working on this, but actually CCD or, um, CD disks and DVD, DVD disks are semi-transparent, so you can actually see some of the light that passes through those disks. And CCDs can see some of the light that passes through those disks. So you put a CCD on the other end of the disk and your scanner on the top and the scanner shoots through the disk and the CCDs beneath the disk read the light and read different levels of the light. But still, your average CCD, the quantum efficiency of an average CCD is maybe in the tens of thousands. So the number of electrons it'll pick up is in like the 10,000 range. That's not a single photon scanning CCD at three degrees Kelvin. You're not gonna get quantum or molecular even precision off of it, but my, my other idea is clustering these CCD chips, the really cheap ones you can get off webcams, putting some kind of cooling on them and running some more silencers on them and synthesizing the data. So we're, that, that's what I mean when I say we're putting a cluster on, on the back of the disk so you can actually read the lines. That's a good sign. So um, these are not the pit groove maps, but these are some maps I made of the convolver. Uh, in pa this is actually Pavre. It's not done with the 3D uh, regular wireframe mesh modeler, but it looks like the internet's down. Is it? Okay. These little things here, this is just more stuff to show you the scale of the spiral, so you can see the scale that the spiral's happening at. And over on the right, that's some coordinate translation. The main thing 
is every time you read a coordinate off a spiral, you have to translate that to the x, y coordinate on the disk so you can get a, a you know, physical location. You're still getting a physical location when you get the point on the spiral. It's just you have to translate it out. So that's what the visualization is, is going to do. Um, the, the, there's a technology called AJAX. It's really JavaScript, um, XML, and CSS, all these technologies fused together. They're old technologies. But they're getting faster and faster. And they're, some of the games are actually better in a lot of ways than applets because they don't crash your browser and they don't take forever to load, but they're still nice and smooth. So we're going to start producing a lot of the uh, interactive images for this in AJAX and JavaScript interactive. So when you go in, you can actually, Google Maps is done that way, so you can move around the spiral like you can move around a big Google map. And you can see real-time scans taking place on the spiral like you can move around a Google map. So it will map out the mesh of the 3D organic goo on the disk, and you can move around it because it's so huge. Let's see if the network's back up so you can see the scale. You can move around it like you'd move around a Google map. It's still down. So this is, this, all, all this stuff is the size of the bit, how the bit size can bear, vary. Uh, these bricks are actually not accurate representations of the uh, spiral bit. They're more like spheres, which are easier to render. But they're stretched out usually. Okay. All right, well, we have no network, but at least we have this page. And one of the other areas, one of the other apps is uh, something called Palo Vault Geospheres. It takes the molecular structures on the disk, and it's an attempt to uh, pick up small energy signatures, like you pick up um, large energy signatures with a collider. So really, one of my goals is to tune small molecular configurations like Radiolaria. There's a site called uh, www.radiolaria.org R -A -D -I -O -L -A -R -I -A .org. and it has all these fantastic designs. They're a lot more intricate than buckyballs. Um, they're slightly larger and organic but they still are enclosures. So I'm looking at tuning those enclosures to pick up very subtle energy signatures. When you when you have a collider um, and a proton and an antiproton hit, there are millions and millions of decays that occur. So in order to read those decays, you need a quantum-capable computer. But in order to get the, uh, those, a quantum-capable computer, you need to read those decays. So it's a real paradox. So one of the, uh, because this is molecular technology, the main, and basically what you'll have is the capability of making a molecular biochip for pennies on the dollar, which is orders of magnitude faster than a large Optron uh, AMD64 supercluster, or even blue gene. If you have enough of these goo blobs spread out in your apartment, you're going to really get a much, much faster machine. Uh, one of the keys to accepting a lot of this is chaos computing, which is using genetic algorithms and really a massively parallel process because the interactions that take place within these goo masses, they're semi-random, they're not entirely linear. There is a order and a linearity to these molecular structures, but it's not like something you'd read when you look at a blown up diagram of a microchip where everything is a big grid and it's all taking place in 3D, so it's a lot more complex and you really can't do it with um, a linear programming approach. You need a chaos programming approach. I really only found a couple references to chaos computing, and that's sort of picking out the subtle EM vibrations and tanning switching power from them. But uh, anyways, so that's the chicken and the egg paradox. Um, in order to get these quantum signatures, and in order to get a quantum computer that powerful, you can start out at the molecular level and then sort of is, is the main app for all these molecular chips that we're looking at designing. It's tunneling in, obviously tunneling into smaller and smaller switching and smaller and smaller switching mechanisms to build a faster computer. So you have a regular, maybe an Opteron cluster as your outer shell, 
and inside that shell you have molecular chips, inside that shell you have maybe atomic chips, and inside that, if your configurations work, you have a subatomic realm, and you can keep probing, and, and a lot of the ways that people are discovering gravity or um, anti-gravity is to uh, read particles decaying. All of those decays, they usually don't read in these huge colliders because there's too many of them. Um, but with powerful enough system, one of the things that we want to look at are all these decays. It's, you know, it's a very generic basic problem that people who want to look at supercomputers, they look at the weather, they look at shifts. Did you have a question there? Yeah, that's 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 that is the case. That's what's currently functional. We're also able to do crypto and MD5 encryption with certain fractalic patterns. Um, that is what I'm doing with a lot of the chaos computing technology. Is looking at what else they can do. Um, there is a the genetic algorithms. There's a bunch of books out on genetic algorithms. But I, um, I really haven't seen too many functions that define a fitness of a switching process and basically throw things in the chaotic soup until they obtain those switching results. So that's one of the things that I want to do with chaos, or that I'm working on with chaos computing and genetic algorithms to define a problem, define something like rendering something in 3D very fast. So if you can have a biochip that does a 3D calculation extremely fast, then I guess you've proven your case once again. It's all really slow because the I.O. is based off a DVD head or a CD head. It's 700 nanometers, which is still good. You're going to get a lot of I.O. off that. But it's only one head, and then it's getting processed in your computer. But if it's a, it's a, if it's a very complex calculation that's taking place on the biochip, like MD5, um, or like a scan even, though that's technically not a switching function. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a breakthrough. It's definitely something that is, is worthy of attention. Um, so yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of problems that can be solved this way, mainly speed and cost. You, know, you can make your own biochip. You're, you're ahead of the, everybody else in, in the computing game. Um, so I don't know if the network's back up. If I go down the list here. What this does is um, I have a, the site is telematics. It's off magicgardenlabs.com, molecular media project. We are going to hook up the technology there and run it in real time and have these scans and switching functions running in real time on CD hardware there. So you can go onto the website and see the CD being scanned and see the biomass being scanned on the website. Play with it. One of the things that I'm working on are, vo are virtual filters that fit on top of the disk. So you can sort of pretend filter the data. You can also synthesize the filters with genetic algorithms. So the filters are generated using a random mutation process. And then they're synthesized using a random mutation process. So all of it right now is at the code vet level. So the functions aren't too complex. Nothing too complex happens. They just sort of feed out and see how basic they can get. So that's good. I got that one on there. Um, oh, it is? OK. So that's, that's really the spiral generation code. That's not going to be too much. But let's go back up here. And this is, this is the actual page. You, uh, uh, in no, I don't. Well, they're down. Maybe this one isn't down. Uh, okay. I can't even read this on here. So, anyways, uh, scrolling down. Here are some links. Optical disk specifications. This is some more graphic stuff at the bottom. So the switching and um, the, the chaos and, and the idea of using genetic algorithms to speed things up is nothing new. There's a kernel trap. On kernel trap, there's a Linux patch for tuning a Linux kernel with genetic algorithms. I have a link to it. I don't think it's on this page, but it's on one of my link lists. 
So it goes through and it guesses the fastest way to tune your Linux system, and it gives usually a 10 to 20 percent uh, performance improvement, which is really significant since you spend a couple hundred bucks to get that much faster on your CPU. But that's really sort of the base level of it. It's really, really fast stuff, and there's a couple other pages. There's a switching page, which is also real big. We're, we're looking at doing models of the microbial structures to see how they bounce light around, to see how they compute. So I got about 10 minutes left. Is, are there any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the website is telescope3d.telescope3d.sourceforge.org. Uh, telescope um, CCD is it's really synthesis. There's a guy Steve Chambers who has the QYAC Club, the Quick Cam Imaging Group out of the UK, and he's gone around and synthesized uh, time based. He's done time based synthesis. synthesis. But really all it is is basic interferometry between two CCDs that are close together. I just call it cellular interferometry. So if you have two CCD chips like this, combining the data on the chips to see if you can get a resolution improvement. So you have a huge cluster. It's, it's making a large CCD chip out of a bunch of little CCD chips. So that's much cheaper. You can just go around and steal webcams and link them together and synthesize the data. But I'm working on getting all the code in. And the first, I have a list of uh, experiments. And the first experiment that I'm doing with the software is actually taking these um, filters, taking different, op it's reverse interferometry. So it takes an optical disk head read at different points along the disk. And then it synthesizes those reads into one image. Sourceforge.net, right. I don't know if it's back up. So a lot of the math is uh, FFT, fast forward, or transform, discrete cosine transform. When we sell the box, those graphs will come up in real time on the box. It'll have a web-based interface. I'm working on a touch screen one, too. But you can see the data stream out from the scans, so it can differentiate bacteria. Um, and then also the crypto is, is the other function. If you want to learn more about the crypto, you can go to this, just do a search for the Molecular Media Project, and that's where all these links are for crypto. And if you want to try it, there's information there on duplicating the experiment. And like I said, we're going to be selling the disks next year. Uh, the disks are specially treated bio disks, but you can use them in a normal PC if you follow the process. And we have a couple more things to sterilize the disk. A couple more mods we're selling. So it's going to be a white box that does the scanning, um, and it's going to have hacker applications, um, really, to create your own switching, to create your own biochip, to beat the, to beat the silicon guys, to beat silicon. I guess that's one, one term. I've never given this talk before. I was called up. I had uh, my Frank the Tank incidents last night. I, was, I went to sleep barely, and I live here, luckily. But I mean, I go to these things all the time. I, I went to CCC two years ago, and uh, it, was, it was a great time. And there was What the Hack this weekend in Holland. I was like, oh, I wish I was there. And then I saw this. And the stuff, the stuff here is much better than what I saw on the website. So I work down the road. It's the easiest thing to get to. So. I got a call around 9, I was still trying to sleep, though I couldn't sleep, at 9.30 in my apartment over in Henderson, and I said, oh, can you come to talk? And 9.30 is about 40 minutes ago. So I'd never given this speech, you know, I sent uh, Dr. Jones an email, you know, I had my Frank the Tank incident, and uh, I, I, got a, I got a spot, and I didn't have any time to prepare it, and then the internet went down, so I had plenty of excuses for, for boring everyone to death. But uh, I would like to give a, a talk that goes into more detail about the MD5 and the crypto, but I can't even read the PDF to see where we're at. But it is pretty cool, and it does work, and you can email it. And the main, these are the main links to look up. The Magic Garden for free or for real is 
this freeware it's just basically a bunch of source code like mutation C code, real basic C code functions that mutate code. What I'd like to do is run it all into Parrot, which uh, believe it or not, they've built parts of Perl with Parrot, and Parrot is a very, very low level language that can do really, really assembly. It's, it looks like assembly when you read it, so it can function as a meta assembly language. So I'd like to code some of these biochips with uh, with Parrot. So when you do the tunneling, you don't have to change the software necessarily. If you have the same assembly context, it can sort of fit to the hardware and run, and build itself all natively with genetic algorithms and with chaos computing and chaos switching. So this is all stuff that I want to do from the ground up with these chips. My main personal interest uh, for the Molecular Media Project and, and my thesis and dissertation is a uh, atomic st are atomic structures or molecular structures for sensing subtle energy patterns to get around the chicken and the egg paradox of supplying more and more power whether it's energy or computing power to uh, capturing subatomic decays so I like to, to, to run those into a PDP web, P2P website uh, distributed global computing website for um, uh, the Holy Grail, which is capturing gravity, developing anti-gravity, um, sensing anti-gravity particles using distributed global computing. I, re I mean, the, the, the website is still called The Sleeping Giant is Awakening, so I guess The Sleeping Giant is taking a while to awaken. I think I'm almost out of time. Like I said, I wish I had, I, I know people here really wanted to hear more about the crypto. But are there any more questions about it or in general? Right, right. Um, well, there are a couple different ways. Their patents are pending. If you look on the website, you can sort of infer the process. It basically is like a baking process that it goes through. Um, and there's also a sterilization project or a sterilization process and that requires a lot of UV. The mod that we're selling is a sterilization mod and the patents pending on it. It involves UV light, some infrared light and even some ozonators, some air ozonators in the contraption. So the main thing is if you're scanning bacteria, if you're doing crypto, you can use harmless bacteria. But the example that we kind of laugh at is you don't want uh, sort of somebody's gonorrhea that you're scanning flying all over your CD disc <laughs> because that's not really the most I guess sterile environment to say the least so you want to contain that stuff as much as possible and that's the real trick of the mod the hardware mod we're selling is to, is to contain all this bacteria even even if there is a leak still contain it with within the source and as you might imagine they they want to scan stuff that I probably shouldn't talk about here with the uh, with the technology, but uh, yeah, we, we're very into to scanning for safety and security. So that that's that's the other the other big application. Um, so ideally, if you follow the instructions on the website, they will show you how to grow bacteria in a petri disk and apply the swab to the disk. It's on the molecular media site, and actually, it's on that PDF that I pulled up. You saw the petri dish with the, the treatment that took place, and you can drop it right on the disc. Put a little droplet. It's a stain on the disc. The discs that we're selling are teeny sized. They're this bit like the 80 meg mini CDs, this big. It's still a 450 to 700 nanometer range. The blue light laser CDs have a plus minus 5 nanometer. So I'm going to see if I can pull something off that in the five nanometer scale. What happens is the head reads the goo and it starts to gyrate around like crazy. And then it gives an anomalous error reading off the, the byte string that it's reading in the uh, checksum range, the checksum area. I think it's 2352 bytes per frame or bytes per sector, yeah. No, if you don't, uh, it will work better. In fact, if you have it. That, that's the other p piece of the software is to get it to scan when it hits the wrong way.
Yeah. Um, there's a plastic layer. There are a bunch of different. I have all these links there, all the layers of all the grooves here. I wish I could pull up. But there's a plastic layer that is on top. It's like an enamel on your tooth that's on top of everything, and that really won't affect anything. But when you grow beyond that and you have more organic stuff on top of it, that's when you can really get a real reading at that scale. Um, but you can't read it in a microscope, even a really good microscope. You need a scanning tunneling electron microscope. Or, and, and, and what it does is it allows your CD to perform that process. But beyond that, since it's on a computer, you can do switching with it. Yeah? Well, that's that's interesting. It's 1.6 typically, 1.6 microns. You'll say, oh, you're still not at 0.13 uh, or 0.09 microns or whatever, or 90 nanometers or whatever the latest Intel die is. But you still have to remember, this is not a EM silicon base. This is a uh, EM wave strictly, and it's a molecular surface. So you're still going way, way faster than anything that's silicon based. The process is completely different. You're on the order of speed of an optical chip this way. I mean, the tunneling, quantum tunneling will allow you to go faster. 1.6 is the typical track pitch. The, um, the depth of the bit is usually maybe it's, they can go up to 3 microns or it can be as small as 0.8 microns. I'm averaging it out around 1.5 microns. The pit is actually a groove in the surface. It uh, looks like a dish or a, an impression of a ball that you sort of put into a flat disk surface. And like I said at the beginning, if, if you burn it on your own burner, it'll have jagged edges. If you buy one with a commercial burner, it'll have smooth, clean edges on it. And then um, the, the JavaScript Google Maps interface, you're going to be able to move around that whole disk, and it's going to simulate where the biomass is on the disk either with a sludge pattern. Ideally, we take some photos and have those up there, too, on it in real time. So we're going to have many, many scans of this running in real time, live next year as, as, as it goes on there. Anything else? I think I, OK. Are there, is there any other one final question? I don't have any other conclusions. Um, the, like I said, I wish I went into more detail about the encryption and the handshake and how fractalic patterns emulate MD5 encryption. That's basically the gist of it. And it can go really in, in any direction on any of the keys. But if you read the PDF, you can see. So I guess that, is that it? No, no other last uh, calls? Okay. Well, I can't, let me see if I can pull this thing up finally. Nope. Oh, well. Okay, thanks.